Pope of Alexander and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander and such great names as these. Hello and welcome to this Battle Mech Quick View. I'm actually going to start this one with a PSA. If you're a merc and someone's offering you a timber wolf or a mad cat, depending on what they want to call it, at a fairly low price, saying that it hasn't been damaged too much, first thing you should be doing is always look at the serial number. Clan serial numbers always start with a zero, normally followed by OM for an Omni or BM for a battle mech. Intersphere serial numbers, as you'll notice, start with the MAD or the CPT or the ZU ZEU of the model number. Yes, there is a way to check to make sure that the mech you're buying is not a Rakshasa. We get so many of those showing up at the factory, it's not even funny. Yes, most of the time, it's commanders memeing on us and making jokes. They know what they've got, they need it fixed, and they need it improved if possible. But you always get that one merc showing up saying that their timber wolf is not working like it should. They walk in the mech into the factory and everybody starts laughing and the guy looks confused. Erek Shasa is a decent mech on its own, but it's not a timber wolf. Really, to start talking about Rakshasa, obviously, we need to start talking about the Mad Cat or Timberwolf if you're a clanner, which is the most iconic clan Omnimech, the one that made the biggest mark when they started walking into the Inner Sphere and taking up all our real estate. And it was so iconic that they made the bigger Mark II, the smaller Mark III that nobody really wants to buy, and the brand new one called the Savage Wolf, which has very similar specs, but a factory that, you know, still builds them. That's the biggest advantage. <laughs> the first commanders that met them, uh, especially if you look at uh, historical records from Comstar, when their targeting computers was trying to lock on to a mad cat, well, it was going mad cat, mad cat, trying to figure out if it was a marauder or a catapult. And, uh, well, it basically is a marauder and a catapult. Merged together with better armor, it's faster, etc. Uh, Comstar Primus asked Anastasius Fox to uh, actually refit all their marauders to this configuration, according to his biography. And he had the reminder that, uh, yeah, that wouldn't fit. Needless to say, when the Mad Cat showed up, people wanted Mad Cats. So much so that even people like Bounty Hunter was looking for one. The Inner Sphere wanted to replicate the Mad Cat, and, well, all Omnimax, actually. And engineers fiddled with it, grabbed some salvage, and tried to figure out how it works. And they designed something that General Motors got the contract to produce. GM really quickly put the design into production, using as many Marauder bits as they could to speed up the process. And they add their factories at Catil, start pushing out as many of those new designs as possible to get the maximum cash in from the hype. And enter the Rakshasa. It's basically as close as you can get to a timber wolf using inner sphere technology on a battle neck frame. And as a frame, it literally uh, uses a marauder frame. It's uh, not, it doesn't just look like a marauder. It's roughly put a marauder with uh, catapult belts bolted on it in the end. It uses a GM 375 XL to go to 85 kilometers per hour or so. It has an endo steel chassis, ferrofibrous armor, everything to minimize weight of the components to be able to pack in as much stuff as possible. Carries 15 double heat sinks, which is rough, but uh, works fairly well, I guess. The design remains fairly easy to repair and fiddle around with because it's roughly put a marauder. You've got the same actuator kits, you've got the same generic internal materials. Nothing on it is unusual, and technicians that have worked with Marauders, which is probably the majority of people, will know how to fix it when it shows up at the store. Maybe the body kit's a bit different, and you might have to refit the body kit to make it look, you know, not terrible. The only bit that's a bit annoying, actually, is that it doesn't have the same stooped stance as the regular Marauder, so it's a bit easier to hit than the regular Marauder, and it has the all-thermoglass canopy, 
which is never something that I really appreciate. I prefer to have a normal view screen with a, a small amount of thermal glass. Your mileage may vary on that one, and good technicians can fix that for you. For your basic configurations, the Rekshasa actually imitates the Timberwolf fairly well. And even though it's all using inner sphere technology, it's still a decent heavy mech in its own right. It can do the job when you need it to. The base design is the MDG-1A, which packs a pair of Exostar ER large lasers, a pair of Martel, as usual, medium lasers, and a Martel medium pulse laser as well. You've got Artemis enhanced 10 racks of LRM on the shoulder, much smaller than the 20 racks the actual Timberwolf has, but it still does the trick, and you actually have more ammo for it than on a Timberwolf most of the time. It does run hot. You have to be careful because those are ER large lasers, and they're not very heat efficient and damage efficient in their standard inner sphere configuration. There is a more heat neutral version that exists, the MDG-1B, which I actually prefer, that uses regular large lasers rather than ER large lasers. You lose a little bit on the range, but you gain a lot on heat efficiency, and it's a, a decent trade to have. There aren't that many other variants out there outside of some custom refits, but there's the MDG-1AR that takes out the ER large lasers and replaces them with snub nose PPCs, taking out the medium pulse lasers to make room. You also put in MML-7s rather than the LRM-10. I'm not always a huge fan of MML. At 7, you get 7 LRMs or 7 SRM. So you get very, very good short-range punch, but you do lose on the long-range punch. It's not a bad design. It's going to do what it's supposed to do, which is brawl. Some of those mech commanders that show up here, uh, having been tricked into buying a Timberwolf and ending up with a Rakshasa and some of the guys who actually know what they got, do come in to the factory and decide to uh, want to put in clan equipment in. Of course, we do charge them for that, and it's uh, not free. But two clan ER large lasers, three clan medium pulse lasers, a pair of LRM-15 racks, still makes a really, really good heavy mech that can do just about everything. It's not a Timberwolf. It's not as bolivalent because you're not going to be able to swap out the pods, but it's going to have pretty much the same firepower for, well, depending on where you get it, a decent portion of the price. With the introduction of the Savage Wolf, we're more than likely going to be seeing a lot more thruer to form Timberwolf clones out there in the future with an actual factory pumping these things out rather than being lost somewhere in the clan homeworld, the Savage Wolf will make a big change as well. With the damage done to their Katil facilities during the Jihad, the Rakshasa production line was also not a huge priority for the people at GM. So these are probably not going to be the most common mech out there. The ones that we see running around are not brand new, but they do the trick. Really, still, you could do a lot worse than getting a Rakshasa if you have access to it. Of course, it's not the cheapest mech ever with all the equipment that's on it, but it's still a deal if you're looking for that 75-ton fast heavy. I hope you guys have a very nice rest of your day. I thank you for listening to me for so long, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.